my first encounter with public art was at a 24-hour mural marathon in Reno, Nevada, nine years ago. Before this day, I was a studio painter and a practicing visual artist for many years. However, I had zero experience with public art. I have never painted outside of the studio, where it will often take me months to finish a single painting. However, there I was, invited as one of the seven artists working side by side, each trying to complete a mural in less than 24 hours. At the beginning, I was timid and self-conscious of being watched. But at some moment, I was able to let go of all these feelings. I actually painted for 24 hours straight. I work nonstop under the pressure of the clock. Having the experience of being at the mercy of the elements and having that time constraint was the exact opposite of my studio practice. I had no time to think, nor to rest, nor to cover my mistakes. I just simply had to keep painting. And somehow this experience was liberating. It opened a new door full of possibilities. It felt like a gust of wind just filled the cell of my boat. Since that day, I have been captivated with the amazing potential of public art. So much that I have decided not only to quit my studio practice, but to also resign from my university art faculty position in order to become a full-time public artist. I was incredibly fortunate to grow up in Madrid, the capital of Spain, with some of the greatest artworks and museums around the world. Thanks to my mother, who took me to these art museums often, it became normal for me to be exposed to all the great Spanish masters like Goya, Miró, Velázquez, Picasso, Dalí, you name it. Instead of having posters of soccer players in my room, I had prints of Renaissance and Baroque masterworks. I became fascinated with the way artists were able to produce and evoke emotions with just some paint on a canvas. Being able to draw and paint well when I was a kid, it really helped me out because I had, and I still have, a stammer when I speak. Drawing and painting were not only a tool, but also um, a communication device where I was actually some, um, somewhat decent at. Eventually, I was referred to a speech therapist at my school. I learned breathing techniques, how to take my time when I speak. But most importantly, I learned how to embrace my stammer. Because at the end of the day, stuttering is not the end of the world. I remember the day that I told my father, I'm going to become an artist. He almost had a heart attack and fainted. <laughs> Years later, once I graduated with my bachelor's degree in studio arts, my new goal became to pursue the Masters of Fine Arts. Little did I know that for the next seven years, I was going to be rejected to every single university and art school that I applied to. I kept many of this, uh, I got, I got many types of rejection. I got many types of rejection letters, many which I kept as a token of appreciation for the future, <laughs> and some that I destroyed in outrage and disappointment. This was a difficult part of my life. Can you imagine what it's like to be rejected for seven years in a row? Through this, I grew to recognize that rejections and failures are crucial in everyone's life. They have the capacity to either destroy your dream or to make it even more desirable. In my case, while I'm still trying to fulfill my dream, I became a street performing clown, a carpenter, a Hollywood extra, and a tennis coach. My life path began, my life path was full of wild and unexpected turns. I questioned my vocation daily. In fact, during this time, I actually quit painting for a while. 
However, my love for the act of painting endured, and it actually became greater than ever. Because I learned not to paint for others' acceptance, but really to paint for my own. Public art has the amazing potential to transform, beautify, and change the perception of any given site. It is out there in the world, made for everyone, and many encounter it every single day. And like billboards all around us, art in public spaces are not trying to sell anything. In the contrary, they are offering experiences and exposing people to art for free. The beauty of public art is that everyone has the equal opportunity to be exposed to it, regardless your social status, gender, religi religion, language, age. Let me give you an example. This past summer, I was hired to transform a boring student apartment complex in Urbana, Illinois, into a vibrant and cool place for college students. Weeks after it was completed, I got a random email from a woman who by coincidence had driven by with her 96-year-old grandma. She told me how the work had impacted her grandmother so much that she made her drive around the block four times <laughs> so she could see it over and over again. Even though the work was intended just for college students, it impacted far beyond the targeted audience. Getting to know the people that will have to interact with my work on a daily basis, it is really an extraordinary experience of creating art in the street. Like the time that I painted in Old Sabre, Connecticut, where I was invited by two high school art teachers to beautify the site of a market. We decided that I was going to paint six of their students, all coming from different backgrounds, in order, in order to celebrate the diversity in their school. I worked with many different classes, and most of the kids had the chance to complete a section of the mural. This project was so impactful that even when I was not working directly with the students, I had a really difficult time focusing on painting because I was being approached by every single person passing by. The day that I was finally able to finish, I found myself in tears while driving back to the airport, because I felt that together we have done something memorable for this new generation. There are many reasons why I, I became a public artist. However, it is the challenge of creating large-scale site-specific artwork that altered the motive of my creative process. My intention is to take an unappealing site and to transform it into a vibrant, stimulating, colorful place. I understand public art as a public service, a gift to the community. But honestly, for me, it goes e even beyond. When I'm done with an artwork, I cannot take it back home with me. It doesn't even belong to me anymore. But what I take is the amazing experience of creating, transforming, and giving. I get to create large-scale work, and galleries don't need to sell it because it already belongs to the people. I help communities by beautifying some of their most needed areas, and hundreds, maybe thousands, get to see my work on a daily basis. I get to travel, visit new places, meet amazing people along the way, Oh, and did I mention that I actually get paid by doing what I love? <laughs> These experiences are the wind behind my sail. It was never my plan to become a public artist. However, my first experience with it changed my life. All my rejections, failures, speech difficulties, each unexpected turn have shaped the artist in front of you today. Teaching the studio may have left me without a physical and conventional place to create art. However, it has given me entire towns and cities as potential canvases to paint. My love for painting 
has never changed, but my purpose for it definitely has. Today, I call myself a visual public artist, a painter interested in representing humanity in all forms, and a person who never settles. Because what is life without the wind blowing ourselves? Thank you. <laughs>